We can manage, she said, welcoming nearly a million migrants to Germany. Three years later, Angela Merkel herself is struggling to manage the political consequences. Across Europe, the migration crisis is bitterly dividing the public and the political classes. Now it's brought the German Chancellor's coalition government to the brink. Today, a temporary lifeline for Mrs. Merkel. I receive support and backup that enables me to go into bilateral talks to negotiate bilateral agreements with European partners at the upcoming EU summit. We also agree today that it is in the German interest to navigate and control migration in good partnership with our European neighbours. Mrs. Merkel's interior minister, Horst Seehofer, wanted police to turn away undocumented migrants at the border. The Chancellor wanted an EU-wide deal instead. Today, after emergency talks, he agreed to give her a fortnight to find a solution. We wish the Chancellor much luck, but we stick to our position that, should that not be possible, we must be able to immediately reject people at the border. A weakened German Chancellor will now stand or fall on whether she can strike a deal with her increasingly fractious European colleagues. But in the meantime, migrants, many from the African continent, continue to arrive, and populist governments in Europe are losing patience. Over the weekend, a ship carrying hundreds of migrants docked in Spain after Italy's new anti-establishment, anti-immigrant government refused to let it into port. Navigating the troubled waters of European politics, the final hazard on an already perilous journey. Well, we're joined now from Brussels by the German Green Party MEP Barbara Lochbiele and from Kielce in Poland by Dominik Toczynski, an MP for the right-wing ruling Law and Justice Party. Good evening. This is Toczynski earlier. When you think about 100 unaccompanied children, seven pregnant women on a ship adrift in the Mediterranean while politicians argued, do you not feel a sense of shame well, about that? Well, first of all, the shame it should be a feeling present uh, within the parents who are, in my opinion, I would say, unmature. They shouldn't take these children. They shouldn't be there. They shouldn't, uh, they shouldn't uh, put their children in the risk by violation of the regulations. So that's the first question. Why this, this, these parents are not responsible for their children and getting them into this kind of situations. But this once is they are ridiculous that now... OK, when... but once they are in that situation, don't the politicians of Europe have a moral humanitarian duty to step in? No. No, because it's about not about helping someone who is receiving very uh, hard situation about the war. It's not about refugees but illegal immigrants it's a, it's a, it's a law it's 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 a difference between illegal immigrant and refugee and you have to remember that if you would try to cross the border you would be killed in in england in everywhere else well, you cannot cross the border only because it's 100 or 200 of you okay well we obviously we don't know how many were illegal immigrants how many were economic migrants and how many were asylum seekers but let me ask barbara lockbeela to respond to your point there that some people at least coming from the african continent are economic migrants Well, first I have to say and to correct this. I think the parents who take their children with them when they migrate or they are refugees, they are very responsible and they do love their children. I think it is just outrageous that politicians can say it's a responsibility for the parents that their children are separated by a completely inhuman policy. So, and now to Europe. Of course, also at our EU borders, we had these brutal pictures of a dead uh, child uh, uh, at the shores of uh, the EU. This was a child 
child from Syria. And uh, so we, most of the people who come uh, to Germany and do not have a visa beforehand, they come from war areas. It's Syria, it's Iraq, it's Afghanistan, it's Yemen, it is Eritrea. And for those, we have the European responsibility, our governments, and we as citizens, to protect them so and to them. help them take them all to make Europe accessible. Them. Okay, he's saying and take secondly, them all and pay and you, for them. Please, you are if I could just say to you, in uh, Poland, could because I, just I say, am speaking. Could I just ask you, Ms. Lochpiela, first? You know, this uh, open door policy that Angela Merkel introduced has also been her political undoing, hasn't it? Well, first of all, I think the German well, Chancellor was right to help these refugees out of the mis misery in 2015. At that time, we in Germany, we were not prepared to have so many in a short time. Now, our structures are working. What we need is Germany within the European Union, that we have a better distribution of the refugees and migrants who are coming. OK, we let are, me put we that are, point. We cannot leave Italy no. alone. Let me put that point to Mr. That. Turchinsky. And, because uh, let me just I, ask Mr. Turchinsky, uh, how many refugees has Poland taken? Zero. And you're proud of that? If you are asking me, if you are, if you are asking me about Muslim, uh, Muslims' illegal immigration, none, not even one will come to Poland. Not even one if it's illegal. We, we took over 2 million Ukrainians who are working, who are peaceful in Poland. We will not receive even one Muslim because this is what we promised. But I asked this not about illegal failed. immigrants. I asked about refugees. And Jean-Claude Juncker, the Commission President, says that you're racist. You sound proud of the fact that you haven't taken any refugees. Of course, because this is what our people are expecting from our government. That's number one. This is why our government was uh, elected. But this is why Poland is so safe. This is the, the, the reason why we had not even uh, one terrorist attack. Look at the streets in Poland. And we can be called populists, nationalists, racists. I don't care. I care about my family and about my country. Pojawia się wiele głosów, że e, islam sam w sobie właśnie nie jest zły, tylko jest źle interpretowany, bądź jest wypaczony przez, e, przez, właśnie przez islamskich ekstremistów i dżihadystów. To jest bzdura. 